Hello Lilas, this is a very quick video, believe it or not, it really will be quick. Um, one thing I wanted to mention as far as people bonding to their with their babies in their collection, I'm not going to go into the explanation of the word bonding with the doll because this is for collectors, not for randoms that don't understand it. Um, the One of the things I found that's number one is that if the baby is not weighted properly, um, you just cannot bond with it. I don't care how beautiful it is and how it's painted. For me, because I am a Philly, touchy Philly collector, I like the feel of my babies. I like to hold them and feel that I'm picking up a real baby. I like to see the way that they fall, even with reborns, because when reborns, their heads fall back, I need them to fall realistically. I, if, if the baby feels like a teddy bear or it feels you know it could have weight and that's another thing people don't understand sometimes babies are heavy but just feels like a block um or just it just feels like just stiff weight um versus fluid and in falling and the limbs falling and you know that type stuff i think that sometimes if you really love the baby painting you love the sculpt but you can't figure out what it is you just don't feel that motherly feel about it um it doesn't give you that ugh, baby feel it's probably you need to reweight it um check out my video um i weighted a baby in a video i did the process um in a video um there are also uh with all due respect rest in peace uh to laura um little x loves did a video and that's how i began to learn how to weight my babies when she did her video and then of course years later I eventually did a video for my audience um, on it as well um, invest in glass beads I recommend buying them from Bountiful Baby you can buy them from wherever um, I um, invest in zip ties polyfill cluster stuff I used to have these things before I was an artist I always had them because the first time I got a baby that I really liked and could not connect with, it was on a body that was way too big for it. Um, I mean, it was literally like a preemie on a toddler body felt like, and it had, you know, three ounces of beads in it and, you know, all this polyfill. It just looked like a big fat blow pig with, you know, a grape size head and, and you know, I, I don't know. It was just weird. And it was a boo boo baby, and I paid probably like $150. It was one of these things where I bought the doll to help the uh, artist out because she owed people dolls and didn't have the money to ship their dolls to them. Okay, that's a whole nother backstory for a whole nother day. Um, and but when I got it, I really loved it, and I just I was afraid to take it apart. I'd never taken a, a doll apart before. and and But I didn't want to send it back to her. Um, and she was like, it's easy to do. Just pop the head off. And I'm like, oh my God, pop the head off. That sounds horrible. Um, and But I did. And um, so long story short, I watched the video step by step. I had the materials and I began to do it. And um, let me see if I have my clip here. I do. Um, I use this, oh God, my hands are horrible. I don't wanna really show my hands, but I use this, let's see, focus baby. Okay, focus. All right, so I use this. It is like, you can buy this from Bountiful Baby as well, but it's like a nail clip thing. But it has this edge. I don't know how to show it. But that gets the zip ties cut down. All the way down to where they're not sticking you. So invest in that as well when you invest in your weighted material. Try that. Also another thing I've tried to that I've seen that totally changed the experience of the doll is the way I was dressing it. Sometimes you dress these babies too mature or two baby and I've changed like you know a, a big baby into dressing it more baby 
or dressing it more age appropriate and it changed the way I felt about the doll. Um, I don't say force a connection with the doll, but I think if you there are things that you extremely love about it and it's just something that's off-putting and you can't put your finger on it, I say try those things first. And then if you just absolutely still have some inkling of a feeling that it's just not working out, then I say sell it. I mean, why let money sit? I mean, they're not accruing interest by sitting unless the only way they're accruing interest in the doll hobby. And that's a whole nother sub subject on investing in collecting. We need to do that one on one because some of y'all are failing at that big time. You guys are throwing all your money down the drain and wondering why you can't never upgrade your doll because you keep buying crap that it'll never sell for not even half of what you paid and you just steady losing money. But we will talk about that another time because so many collectors say, I don't buy to, with the intent to sell. I don't buy. I always buy with the intent to keep. Okay, well, you keep that attitude and you're behind. We'll be broke. Trust me. Um, anyway. What was I saying? <laughs> but yeah, you, um, your money, oh, the dolls are not accruing interest when they're sitting. Um, they're actually decreasing in value. The only way they accrue is it's a very limited sold out edition that no one can hardly get their hands on. And like, for instance, my Maggie, the blank scope itself is selling three times the amount right now. Now that could change too. All of a sudden, you know, nobody could care for a Maggie right now, you know, or, you know, six months later, nobody could care about a Maggie, but there's always going to be that one person that wished they would have got hold of that kit and they're going to want it. And guess what? I got it. <laughs> and guess what? You're going to pay for it. Yes, you are. You're going to pay honey out the yang because it is sold out and it is limited. And yes, I ain't mad at people that do it. I'm mad when I have to pay it when I'm on the opposite end. But hey, kudos to them for making their money. Sorry, y'all. Y'all can hate me later. But hey, all right. I've probably lost about 10 subscribers just off of that statement. Alone. But let's move on. So sell it. You don't love it? Sell it. Okay, well, I paid, you know, $900 for this doll and I know it's not worth $900 and I know nobody's going to give it to me. Okay, you put it up for $900. Mm, it sits for a while. Mm, you drop it down to $800. It sits for a while. Okay, I don't want to lose that much money. I'd rather just keep it. Um, Let's think about this. Zero plus a doll that you don't like versus mm, $600. You lost $300, but you gained $600. So let's see. Zero plus a doll you don't like. 600 towards a doll that you do like. Yep, I think sell it is still the option. So when you're thinking about that, think about it that way. And that's just bond or not bond 1.0. Sell or not to sell 1.0. That is the first lesson of today, guys. I hope you guys have took notes and you guys know what you're doing now going forward. If you don't, stay tuned because I have a lot more to tell about my tricks and trades. And I'm going to be very honest with you guys. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything and I'm not going to worry about if it's going to hurt myself because what I've learned in this world, what is meant for me, boo boo, <laughs> is meant for me and what is mine will be mine. And you haters, goal snatchers, joy killers will not be able to take that from me nor will I be able to take it from you. So I am going to give you me, my thoughts, my opinions in that moment. Will it change? It could. Life don't stand still for nobody. And if you're standing stagnant and if you're still thinking the same way that you were thinking five years ago, then that is something you need to be thinking about and reevaluating in your life because that means you have not grown you have not did nothing but stand still and for five years or three years or two years or one years or six months you should have the have changed something or grown you, your core values and beliefs may not change but there is growth and evolving and if you're you know still on the same level as you were in kindergarten or first grade some people would call that a uh, immature but um hey if you want to be 40 years old and still thinking the way you were when you were 20, that's on you. I'm not judging. I'm just saying I'm not there. I'm, I'm wanting to grow. I'm wanting to evolve. And so, yeah, sometime I felt, you know, maybe I felt that Reborns wasn't as valuable or um, the price of a Reborn shouldn't cost as much as a silicone. And now I'm kind of thinking, well, it just depends on that Reborn. 
But I will still say that when it comes to investing, um, you're going to be like driving a new car off a car lot with a reborn. It's definitely going to depreciate as soon as you drive it off. I don't care how high in it is. Reborn, silicones are more like houses. They don't necessarily depreciate. They appreciate sometimes if you do a good investment. All right, guys. Um, it, well, and then and, 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 and with buying a house, you don't go in a market and you don't bid on a house more than the property value. That's where you guys go wrong. And that's why you guys are saying, well, you lose money on them too. You lose a lot of money. That's because you are going in saying, I know that my loan won't pay for this because it won't appraise at this amount, but I'm going to pay you more just because I want it bad enough. Well, you go ahead and you pay that. But remember that it doesn't appraise at that amount. So you're already going in upside down and negative. Anyway, guys, y'all don't need to listen to me because I know nothing about finances. <laughs> uh, yeah, bye.